So today we are looking at the second of our series of God's Big Story. Last week we looked at the creation story and how it shows God as a powerful creator and how humans were made to have a special relationship with him. This morning we look at where it all goes horribly wrong in the fall where Adam and Eve are tempted. So first our reading from Genesis chapter 3. The serpent was clever, more clever than any wild animal God had made. He spoke to the woman. Do I understand that God told you not to eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, not at all. We can eat from the trees in the garden. It's only about the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, don't eat from it. Don't even touch it or you'll die. The serpent told the woman, you won't die. God knows that the moment you eat from that tree, you'll see what's really going on. You'll be just like God, knowing everything, ranging all the way from good to evil. When the woman saw that the tree looked like good eating and realised what she would get out of it, she'd know everything. She took and ate the fruit and then gave some to her husband and he ate. Immediately, the two of them did see what's really going on, saw themselves naked they sewed fig trees, fig leaves together as a makeshift clothes for themselves. When they heard the sound of God strolling in the garden in the evening breeze, the man and his wife hid in the trees of the garden, hid from God. So God called to the man, where are you? He said, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid. God said, who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree I told you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you gave me as a companion, she gave me fruit from the tree. And yes, I ate it. God said to the woman, what is this that you've done? The serpent seduced me, she said, and I ate. God told the serpent, because you've done this, you're cursed. Cursed beyond all cattle and wild animals. Cursed to slink on your belly and eat dirt all your life. I'm declaring war between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He'll wound your head you'll wound his heel. He told the woman, I'll multiply your pains in childbirth. You'll give birth to your babies in pain. You'll want to please your husband, but he'll lord it over you. He told the man, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from, don't eat from this tree. The very ground is cursed because of you. Getting food from the ground will be as painful as having babies is for your wife. You'll be working in pain all your life long. The ground will sprout thorns and weeds. You'll get your food the hard way, planting and tilling and harvesting, sweating in the fields from dawn to dusk until you return to that ground yourself, dead and buried. You started out as dirt, you'll end up dirt. The man known as Adam named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all the living. God made leather clothing for Adam and his wife and dressed them. God said, the man has become like one of us, capable of knowing everything, ranging from good to evil. What if you now should reach out and take fruit from the tree of life and eat and live forever? Never. This cannot happen. So God expelled them from the garden of Eden and sent them to work the ground, the same dirt out of which they'd been made. He threw them out of the garden and stationed angel cherubim and a revolving sword of fire east of it, guarding the path to the tree of life. Well, I feel a bit sorry for Adam and Eve because temptation is really hard to resist, isn't it? For me, it's around food. Um, if it's not there, I'm not bothered. But if it's there, I really want it. I want to share a little story with you. This is a, a true story. Um, I hope I don't get in trouble with naming the person that I was involved with. But one evening, I was at the licensing service of a new vicar. And the organisers made the fatal mistake of sending all the clergy to robe up in the same room that the buffet was being served. And it was amazing. There was so much delicious stuff all laid out in front of us, really, really tempting us. And we were pretty good, actually. We resisted for quite a long time. But then on the way past in the procession, our willpower had gone. And so... Um, Bishop Philip and I managed to uh, snatch a mini meringue each and stuffed it into our mouth on the way past, accompanied by much giggling and looks of horror from the other clergy, those who were shocked and those who kind of wished they had the uh, gumption to do it with us, I think. Anyway, I'm sure you've all got your own temptation stories. 
when we look at the creation story, we hear over and over again the words, and it was good. God was pleased with everything that he'd made, and it was all done according to his divine device, fulfilling his divine purpose. There was nothing that God intended to achieve in creation that was left out. There was nothing lacking. God had created the world and everything in it in a way that resulted in man's good and God's glory, exactly as God intended. God's greatest provision for humans was himself. God is what we need most as our ultimate source of life and fulfilment. And that's why God told Adam and Eve that disobeying his command would result in death. Not a literal dropping down dead, but they were cut off from their source of life, God, resulting in spiritual death. Losing the beauty of living in the Garden of Eden as they were banished was the least of their problems. They lost their friendship and close relationship with God. Put very simply, Adam and Eve go against what God told them. The Bible calls this sin. Sin brings death into the world. Humankind spoilt creation and broke the relationship with God. Therefore, humans became in need of rescue as every person struggles with temptation. As we continue to look at the ongoing story as it unfolds throughout the Bible, we discover how God finds a way of restoring this original picture. One big question that we're left with, though, is if God knew Adam and Eve were going to disobey him, why did he put temptation in their way? Well, some Christians would answer this by saying that God needs to give humans the freedom to choose to obey. What would a world be like where God steps in and thwarts every action of ours which might lead to us or others to harm? Would that actually be a good world? Some Christians think that free will is a reasonable, if inadequate, explanation of some of the suffering that we encounter in our world. Immediately after the fall, we see what God is like. We see him in his goodness and mercy, reaching out to comfort and save his lost children. Adam and Eve's deep sense of guilt before God made them feel afraid and ashamed. They ran off and hid among the trees of the garden. They'd broken the covenant of love with him. But what does God do? Well, he does what he did every day. He walks in the garden and he comes to see them. There's not one word of reprimand. It's almost like God doesn't know about their awful fall. He acts as if nothing has changed. God knew about their sin, but from his point of view, the covenant wasn't broken. From God's side, nothing had changed. The damage in the relationship came from the side of people and not from God. Despite their rejection of him and their hiding, God still keeps on coming, searching and waiting for them despite what they've done. He doesn't give up on them because of his amazing goodness, his love, mercy, patience and grace, because he's a God of love and salvation. It was man, not God, who broke the covenant of love. And God would have been perfectly within his rights to let them go and cut off all the relationships with them because that's what they deserved. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't say, well, if you want to come back, then you have to make the first move. Maybe I'll forgive you and we can try again. Or, well, if you don't want my love, you better find your own way. He goes after them and he doesn't give up until they respond to his call of where are you? Adam and Eve responded to a love that's so strong and as they come crawling out of their hiding place, they admit that they ate the fruit. Repentance, a simple and honest confession of sin. No trying to hide it or to cover it up. That's as far as humans can go in restoring the relationship. We can confess our sin. This is where God always seeks to bring us back because it brings us back to the Father where we belong. He finds us in our failure and our guilt and he moves to bring us to repentance and reconciliation and the relationship is restored. That's what we see him doing here with Adam and Eve. God calls and he keeps on calling to the ends of the earth. Where are you? And if we respond we come out of our hiding places then he will be merciful he will forgive the sins of his people and receive them as his own and that opportunity is there for everybody amen